Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Will here. In this video, we're going to continue with the Kima Essentials series, an introduction to Cappy Talk or the real time event driven language within Kima. That's a formal definition, but we're going to look at it at the most basic level and we're going to address some of the more common issues that I've been approached with and that I actually had in the beginning as well, like what to do with these event values, words in bright red with the leading exclamation point. What can I do with them? Why are they named the way they are? And so on. By the end of the video, I think it'll be much clearer at the basic level, and it should help you immensely moving forward. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so now that we know what CapiTalk is as far as a formal definition goes, let's look at it in a really practical scenario here and address some of the common first questions. So I'm inside an oscillator right from the prototype strips and Kima, and I've enlarged the parameter fields for the envelope and frequency and we see cappy talk in both of these parameter fields the bright red remember is the event value and then this is the code and the same scenario down here just to make this really super clear i'm gonna work on the parameter field for the frequency and just put frequency if you just type an exclamation point Kima will automatically append the parameter field name to the end and then let's go ahead and have a look and a listen to this. So you notice we have two faders, amp low, which corresponds to amp low here, and frequency to frequency, and then I can move them in real time. Notice frequency goes from 0 to 20,000, and amp low goes from 0 to 1. So you might be wondering why amp low and why frequency and do I have to use those names? Well the why part of things is because it makes sense and the question do you have to is no. You can put whatever you want there although it is highly recommended to put something that makes sense or as you hear it changing the sound. So it would make sense that we have a frequency fader for changing the frequency of the oscillator but just to show you that it doesn't really matter if I put in something like oscillator frequency and then play this you notice when the name gets a little longer Kima shortens it but if I spread the widget out we can get the full name And then we're not hearing anything. We notice that the range of this fader is only 0 to 1. So that would be a low frequency oscillator or sub audio functioning like a control signal. So we can't hear it. But if I put this into the same range that, that it was before, up to 20,000, we'll notice all of a sudden it's the exact same thing. What would happen if I gave it an entirely ridiculous name just for sake of example something like happy holidays you notice we have that same issue again with the shortening the name so I'll just spread it out so it's clear And it defaulted to a range of 0 to 1, which is what Kima does when it doesn't recognize the event value that you've used. If I put in 0 to 20,000, it sounds the same. So the takeaway is that you can use any name there as long as you follow a couple of rules, which we'll go over in a moment and that it should be a useful name to how you hear it changing the sound so that your future self will be happy and anyone else you might share the sound with. And this goes for anywhere there's Cappy Talk. So these same set of guidelines or suggestions would work up here for Amp Low um, or anywhere else you see uh, Cappy Talk at this bright red leading exclamation point. So the only rules that you have to follow are there's no special characters allowed here so you can't use things like you know a money symbol or anything and Kima even 
provides a little bit of graphic feedback there staying black. You have to start with letters, upper or lowercase is fine. You can only use underscores, you can't use a hyphen. You notice it went black and then sort of a darker brown there. So a dead giveaway that uh, things are still going well is your bright red. And then you can't lead with a number like this, but you can type nine, for example. All right, so as long as you follow that, you can put any name at all that you want there, as absurd as it might be. So even that bit there, we see it show up here. Again, if Kima doesn't recognize your event value, it defaults to the range of zero to one which is, might be why you don't hear anything, as long as you put it into the range of values that Kima expects to see, or that works with your design, once you get a little bit more advanced, then all is smooth. So now that you know that, this name is not the most important part. It is important, but what parameter field it's in is more important. So you know that this is going to influence the frequency of the oscillator in this case regardless of the name. And so the same thing would be true up here. If we change these uh, event values here, it would change the overall envelope of the sound of the oscillator. So now you can take these principles and investigate other sounds. For example, here's another one from the prototypes. We see a bunch of cappy talk in this sound, you know, this bright red and purple again, and then for note numbers, and we can see that the frequency of this oscillator is going to be controlled by a key number, and MIDI note numbers. So from 0 to 127, whichever key we press, that's going to be the frequency of the oscillator. It's going to be gated when a MIDI key goes down. The scale or the overall level of the sample from the key velocity, and that's how hard you you press it. So now you have some of the tools to go in and investigate and understand that the name can be whatever you want it. And this is a big thing that a lot of people, including myself initially, get somewhat held up on, but a good thing to know. And then you might be wondering why some values seem to have a default range that's sensible, and that's because on the back end of things, uh, symbolic sound has kind of helped us out um, in something called the, the global map, which you can find inside your Kima 7 folder. In case you're curious, you can find something in here called global maps. And then if you were to look in here, you would see some of these things have been mapped beforehand for MIDI events, MIDI timing clock, the Wacom tablet is in here, and so on. So an interesting thing to have a look at, here's the Wacom tablet. So you, and you can obviously change that or make your own, but in case you're curious, that's why some of these values uh, seem to have an association beforehand, but just know that like anything in Kiba, you can adjust it to your specific uses and your design. So there you have it. That's a very soft, basic introduction to Cappy Talk and these names, but I think that hopefully is quite useful for you to get started. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.